Hi, my name is Garrett Town. I'm an electrical engineer with AM Solar, and in today's video, we're going to go over solar panel specifications, how they tie to the IV curve, and then how that will lead into how MPPT charge controllers are different from PWM charge controllers. It's a long journey. Stick with me, we'll get through this. So we're gonna start off with panel specifications and we're gonna use the hugely popular uh, Zamp Obsidian 100 watt panel. Uh, on the back of the panel right here, you can see the panel specifications and I summarize the important ones on the dry erase board. So we've got uh, Pmax 100 watts, VOC, that stands for voltage open circuit, 25.62 volts VMP which is voltage at maximum power 21.9 volts ISC is a uh, short circuit current 4.83 amps IMP that's current at maximum power 4.58 amps and you're wondering why is there an I instead of like a C or an A and the I stands for it's French for intensité du courant, something like that. My accent's a little off. And even though we aren't French, or most of us here aren't French, uh, we're gonna use an I instead of something that might seem a little more reasonable, like a C for current or an A for amps. One of the first concepts they teach in electrical engineering school is Ohm's law, and that's how current and voltage and resistance all relate to each other. So current I is measured in amps, V volts, R is ohms, and sometimes they use the omega symbol for that. So current equals volts divided by resistance. And uh, when you have your panel connected to a load, the load is the resistance. So with Ohm's law, you can see that um, if you have less resistance, you'll have more current. If you have more current, you'll have uh, less voltage. So if you were to take a solar panel and vary the resistance from zero to infinity and then graph the voltage and current as you do that, you end up with a shape like this. So here would be um, zero resistance, which is a short circuit, and out on this end is infinite resistance, which is open circuit. So we see that this line, it crosses the y-axis, or I for current, right here at the ISC value, so current short circuit 4.83 amps. And it goes down like this, it makes a dog leg, and then heads down a little steeper, down to the open circuit voltage point, where the two terminals are just wide open, and it's 25.62 volts. An important point right here is where that dog leg happens, and that's where the slope is exactly negative one. And at that point, the combination, or the voltage times current, which is power, is the greatest number. So that is 21.90 volts and 4.58 amps. So all of these values are measured at what they call standard test conditions, which is 25 degrees Celsius and 1,000 watts per meter squared of solar irradiance. So that means that this isn't going, you're not going to get these numbers when it's not that bright or if you're indoors or something like that. They pick 25 degrees Celsius and 1,000 uh, watts per meter square because that's pretty similar to what you'd get on a really bright day. So when you change the brightness or the temperature, the curve will shift. If you got more bright, like if you had some cloud edge effect, where you had the sun and then a cloud right next to it that was really bright, so you had a little bit more sun, the curve would shift upwards. And if you had, like if it was a really cold day, um, the curve would shift to the right. When it gets colder, it goes to the right. So on a really bright 
cold day, um, it's possible that you could get more than the 100 watts out of the panel. So you might be out here on a really bright cold day. So cold, bright. And a new VMPP or IMPP is established. So as this curve shifts and the power point shifts, and if you want to max, you, you want to maximize the power that you get off of the solar panel, you need a charge controller that's going to be able to track these changes to get the maximum power. That's where they come up with maximum power point tracking charge controllers. So this curve is just constantly changing depending on, you know, there's the temperature, if clouds go by, if you go in some shade or whatever. So the charge controller, like one example of an MPPT algorithm might be that it just selects a, you know, starting point and it says we're going to draw power from the panel at this voltage right here. And then maybe a second later, it uh, tests like, what if I move the voltage over this way just a little bit? Am I getting more power? Uh, nope, that took me down. So I'm gonna, instead of doing that, I'm gonna go right back to where I was. And then maybe another duration of time later, it will go this way and pick a point here. Did I get more power? Nope. I'll go back here and it just repeats that process just bouncing around back and forth continuously to find the optimal place that's constantly shifting to draw power from the panel. So it's not always going to draw 21.9 VMP. It'll only do that when it's 25 degrees Celsius and 1000 watts per meter irradiance. When it gets brighter it's going to change, when it gets colder it's going to change and it's going to be constantly changing. Power equals volts times amps, and you want to maximize that power. And to determine the power on an IV curve, it's basically the area of this box when you're using a MPPT charge controller. So we'll call this MPPT power, the area of that box. If you use the PWM charge controller, they operate a lot differently. They uh, establish a pulsed direct connection to a battery. So it's going to operate at the voltage of the battery and maybe that's 13 volts. So you have a line right here to there. So that is your new operating point with a PWM charge controller. So. PWM power. You can see that the size of this rectangle versus that rectangle is quite a bit different because the PWMs aren't as efficient. Uh, they're not tracking and it usually works out to be about a 20% difference. The MPPT charge controllers work about 20% better. If this subject interests you, follow our channel. We're going to work hard to put up more videos like this. If you need a power system for your RV, go to amsolar.com and fill out a quote request. Thanks for watching.